Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the important topic of catching exceptions in the right order. And this, this, this is a question that comes up quite a lot on job interviews, but it's also just important to know for the sake of your own coding, of course. Uh, so I, I want to take here um, two exceptions, where one exception is a subclass of the other. So I could define my own custom exception here and create a subclass of it for the purposes of this tutorial. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the standard exception um, as, my, as an example of my superclass, parent class, and I'm going to use bad alloc here, which is a subclass of the standard exception um, class as an example of my subclass. So the important thing is we've got this child-parent relationship between our two exceptions. Now let's create a function here. I'll call it goes wrong. And depending on what goes wrong in this method, um, it's going to throw one of two exceptions. So uh, we could say, let's say bool um, error one detected. Let's set that equal to true. And bool error two detected equals false. And let's say here, if error one detected. So if, if some kind of error, which we're just calling error one, is detected when this function runs, it's going to throw a bad alloc, like that. And we, we can say that um, later on, let, let's say it doesn't throw that bad alloc, so the first kind of error is not detected. Um, I'm artificially, I'm not detecting errors here, I'm just setting a Boolean variable, but imagine that we're detecting these errors somehow in the code. Imagine error, error 1 is not detected, the code continues, and it throws a, a, an exception like this. Let's, let's just include in here, although uh, iostream is helping us, but let's include the exception header here. Um, I, I, don't, I, th I think bad alloc is probably in this exception header. If it isn't for your compiler, you might need to include some other header for bad alloc, which you can easily find just by doing a quick Google. But um, this works on my compiler, and I imagine will work on most. Uh, so let's let's try try this. Let's put it in a literally try it in a try block. Let's call goes wrong, and I'm going to write some code here. I'm going to say catch exception reference e. This is, this is the parent class and I'm going to do a c out e dot what endler. Then let's put a catch bad alloc reference e and let's do a c out e dot what again and let's run this code and see what happens. So we can see here that we've got a method that could throw either of these two exceptions depending on what errors occur. Well, in fact, it can't because of these booleans, but imagine that potentially it could throw either one of these two depending on exactly what goes wrong. It just so happens that this time it, it's actually gonna throw bad alloc. So um, let's, let's try running this program and see what happens. Now we get here, um, from e dot what we've got bad alloc printed out. So the code appears to work as we expect, but in fact, it's not working as you expect it to. You might be able to spot what's wrong here, and the clue is uh, polymorphism. Remember, polymorphism guarantees that we can use a subclass wherever a parent class is expected. So what's going to happen here is goes wrong, throws this bad alloc exception, and it works down the catch blocks one after the other. The first catch block that it encounters is this. So it's expecting something of type exception. And remember, bad alloc is a subclass of this exception class. Therefore, polymorphism tells us that it's, it's going to fit here. This, this is going to accept bad alloc because bad alloc is a kind of exception in the sense of this class. Therefore, it's actually this what that executes. But because the object, the underlying object that's being thrown is of type bad alloc, bad alloc, because what is a virtual method, we get the correct error output. But if we put some text in here um, to illustrate what's actually happening, catching exception, 
and let's let's put down here catching bad alloc. Let's run this. What we find is we're actually catching when the program actually runs properly. We're actually catching um, exception. We're not catching bad alloc. You notice we're actually executing this. So the upshot of this is that you must be careful to catch your exceptions with the subclasses before any of their parent classes. Otherwise, they're useless. And again, we'll get, we'll get an, an error or, or a warning about this in Java. But because C++ is just, it's basically just doing what you tell it, um, it, it's limited in what errors it's able to detect at compile time. So C++ lets you write this code. It just doesn't work as you expect. So always put the subclasses first. And now if we, if we run this, we correctly catch bad alloc here, so we're executing this. If we were to throw um, error 2 instead, we have no problem now because um, if we run this, we get catching exception, standard exception, so we're running this because a bad alloc is a type of exception uh, in, in the sense of the exception class, but the exception class is not a type of bad alloc. So if we throw exception here, the parent class, it will not fit into this catch block. So it's really important to understand that and to watch out for that. Uh, so again, I'd, I'd, tr I'd recommend trying that out for yourself. Just give it a go. Um, and uh, then you might one day get a job that you wouldn't otherwise get. Have a go at... Um, it's, it's also good if, if you feel like going to the trouble of declaring your, your own exception parent and, and child classes and experimenting with catching those in different orders and you'll see again that what happens is you need to catch the subclasses before the parent classes because of polymorphism and we covered polymorphism in the free uh, beginners course if you want a refresher of that okay so that's it for this tutorial until next time happy coding